Hello everyone and Namaskar. Today's discourse is titled Haripari Mandala, given on January 5th, 1979, Patna, India. In the scriptures and kirtanas, the word Haripari Mandala is often mentioned. You know, for a devotee, the dearest entity is Paramapurusha, or Hari, as he is the only entity in this universe which lasts for eternity. Paramapurusha alone remains with humans until the end. All other entities are finite, limited. Only Hari and Harikata are endless. That is why intelligent people should establish a relationship of deep love with the infinite entity. Hari is an internal entity, residing in the innermost core of everyone's heart be it the heart of a bird, a fool, a scholar, a good person or a bad person, Hari's throne is there. He only considers one thing, whether that heart has love and devotion for him. Suppose a certain person commits so many sins, rather is totally immersed in the ocean of sin. Hari resides even in such a sinner's heart and will reside there in the future too. He will examine that heart to see how much love and devotion there is for him. Whenever the devotees of Hari assemble together, they do not like to gossip, but prefer to do Hari Kirtana and nothing else. Whoever comes within the circumference of that spiritual gathering will certainly feel an irresistible desire to participate in that spiritual dance. The sweet spiritual environment created by the Kirtana is called Hari Parimandala in the scriptures. Hari resides at its nucleus. Those in the Hari Parimandala are by nature devotional. When they participate in the Kirtan, they become even more devotional. Whenever Hari Parimandala is created, be it for 5 minutes, 3 hours, or 24 hours, due to the intense collective devotion, the environment becomes so sweet and blissful that it becomes highly congenial for spiritual ideation, dhyan. At that time, Hari moves his nucleus there and becomes the focal point of dhyan, the object of ideation. From the devotional point of view, it is certainly Hari Parimandala. And from Hari's point of view, it is also Hari Parimandala. As these two viewpoints coincide at one point, Every spiritual aspirant enjoys endless bliss. Thus, it is said, Bhakti Bhaktasya Jivanam. Just as fish cannot live without water, a human being cannot live without the earth, and a bird cannot live without the sky, a devotee cannot live without devotion. Without Hari, the very existence of a devotee is endangered. If devotees are estranged from Hari or separated from devotion, they become as miserable as a fish out of water. The worst calamity that can befall a devotee is to be separated from devotion. Those who try to deprive people of devotion, who tried in the past and will try in the future, certainly invite their own destruction. Hari never wants to harm anyone, nor do his devotees. However, if an individual or a force tries to disturb the Hari Pari Mandala of the devotee, or will try to do so in the future, they will certainly meet their destruction. It is a natural law. It is not at all necessary to harbor any thought of others' destruction. Destruction comes as a matter of course. Thank you.